Are you ready to load thousands of retro games to your Xbox internal hard drive? You've come to the right video. I'm going to show you all the steps it takes to get this done, and it all starts right now. Hi, Blaine Locklear here to supercharge your video game hardware and software through restorations, repairs, mods, product reviews, and other video game content. Do that by subscribing. Let's get your Xbox set up. You'll need to have either a soft modded or hard modded Xbox in order to take advantage of using Xbox Media Center and Emu Station. If you need to soft mod your original Xbox, I've got a video showing you how that's done linked in the description below. And you'll need to know how to transfer files via FTP to your original Xbox hard drive. If you need to learn how to do that skill, I also have a link for that for you in the description below. MU Station is a variation of the Xbox Media Center that's produced by tremendous Xbox contributor JC Rocky5. He's worked on this even all the way through modern times in 2020. This webpage on the GitHub is linked for you in the description below. To download it for your Xbox, scroll down on this page on the GitHub until you get to the download link for XBMC MU Station and click on it. Then on the Google Drive page that appears, just go over to the right to the download link and click on this. Then you'll be able to download MU Station directly to your local hard drive on your computer. While I'm demonstrating this portion on Mac, this works exactly the same way on PC or anything else. You need to uncompress the downloaded folder. You can double click on it on Mac and it'll make the folder for you. Or pick Extract All on PC. I recommend deleting the compressed folders once you're done with them to eliminate confusion moving forward. That's all you have to do. You just need to uncompress this folder at this point. On your Xbox console, you'll need to have the IP address for the console. In this case, I'm using Unleash X, so it's in the bottom right corner. And it's going to be 192.168.0.62. Just understand that your IP address is going to be different than mine. Whatever your IP address is, go ahead and document this information. Using your favorite FTP software, in this case I'm using FileZilla for Mac, Connect to your Xbox console. You'll need to put in the IP address that you found on your Xbox console, along with username Xbox, password Xbox, both in lowercase, and port number 21. All right, let's slow our roll here for just a minute to take a look at these drive letters and how they impact you. If you still have the original hard drive in your Xbox, the eight gigabyte model, you're only gonna have access to drive C and E. I would recommend that you put any of these files on E in that situation, and I would also recommend skipping the section for installing images because some of them are very large and they'll put a huge dent in what you can store in terms of games on that drive. In this case, this is a two terabyte hard drive and it has F and G partitions, so that's the partition I'm going to be using, partition G. Back at the full view interface for FileZilla, select the drive partition you want to copy to, either E for your original hard drive, or F or G if you have an expanded hard drive. In this case, it's going to be G. On the left side, go to the folder where you downloaded Xbox Media Center MU Station. In this case, it's Downloads, and just drag that whole folder as is and drop it right on the root of whichever partition you want to use. Once it's completely transferred over to your Xbox, transition over to the Xbox so that you can launch it for the first time. To launch this properly from Unleash X, you actually don't want to use the XBMC link that's listed here because you just copied this over, it doesn't know the path. So to launch this for the first time, go down until you get to Xbox Admin and select it with the A button. From here, scroll down until you get to System and select it with the A button. Then select File Explorer with the A button. Use the right trigger to switch from the left pane to the right pane. Here you'll be able to access your drive letters, go down to G or whatever drive partition you've selected, and select it with the A button. Here you'll see that folder you just copied over for XBMC MU Station. Select it and go into it with the A button. Then scroll down to default.xbe and select it with the A button. This will launch XBMC MU Station for the first time. Once MU Station loads, you'll see some pop-up messages. Let's go through these one at a time because they're going to help you understand where things are located and where you need to put things like your ROMs on your Xbox hard drive. Press A and you'll see a screen that tells you exactly where you need to put the ROM files, which is going to be in the folder that you downloaded and copied over, then the folder MU Station, 
and then ROMs, and then there's individual systems for each one. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. Press A to continue forward. What you'll see here is an exception that the Jaguar has to have those ROMs right next to the emulator file itself. Once you get this, press A to continue, and you'll get a message that the ROM file names and the image file names have to be exactly the same, and if they're not, you won't be able to see the images for the games inside the interface. Press A to continue. Next, you'll get the opportunity to calibrate your screen to make sure that the width and height stretch from edge to edge. Press A to continue. What you'll see is this screen right here. This gives you the option to make any changes necessary to make sure that the display fills up your entire television or monitor. Once you're satisfied that the edges meet the edges of your display, press B to go back and that will take you to the EmuStation main interface for the first time. Now you can just leave your Xbox sitting right here on this menu and FTP is still active between the Xbox and your computer, so let's go back to FileZilla. The kind of ROMs you want to transfer over for this project are called Resurrection Extras ROMs. Two S's in Resurrection, no E in Extras ROMs. While I can't link to them directly for you, you can put that search term in Google and I assure you you'll find what you're looking for pretty darn easy. Remember, at no point did we disconnect the FTP connection between the Xbox and your computer, so you can still roll right into this. To go to the right folder, go to the drive where you copied over XBMC MU Station. Then go into the MU Station folder inside that folder. Now you're going to see a folder in here called ROMs. It wouldn't have been there before had you not gone through this process. Inside that ROMs folder, you'll see all of the subfolders for all of the ROMs supported by EmuStation. That's why we went and fired it up for the first time on Xbox. It has to build this folder structure for you. Then you can go into the one you want. In this case, I'm going to use Sega Genesis. Over in the left panel is where you want to put the ROMs that you're going to copy over. You want to drag all of the ROM folders. You can leave them zipped up, by the way. That's fine. Grab all of the ROMs that you want to drag over at one time and just copy them right over into the folder in emustation slash roms slash whatever system folder that is. You can just drag them and drop them right there and let them all transfer over. Depending on the number of roms you're transferring over, this could take quite a bit of time, so just let it do its thing. Once it's done copying your roms over, you can either leave the FTP connection active, or if you're done copying things over to your Xbox, just go ahead and close out FileZilla. Back on your Xbox, EmuStation doesn't know yet that you've transferred games over to it. You need to tell it to scan for those games in order to be able to add them to your menu system. Use the Start button on your Xbox controller to launch a new menu. Inside this menu, use the D-pad to scroll down until you get to Scanner and select it with the A button. There are some options inside the scanner that I would strongly recommend you turn on. Use the D-pad to scroll down to Scanner Options and check this box with the A button. From here, you'll be able to scroll down to all of the options below it that are turned off. You want to turn all of these options on. And here's why. This has a lot to do with making sure that the file names are formatted correctly to match images for the user interface. It also helps build what are called the synopsis files. These are things that basically give you a lot of information about the game for certain aspects of the user interface that you might be interested in. And finally, if you're planning to use any Sega CD or Mega CD drive type ISO files, you want to make sure that's turned on as well. Once you have all of these selected, there are two ways that you can run the scanner. The first one is that you can run the scanner for everything on your hard drive. This is great because it's really simple, but it will scan everything and it can take a long time. Let me just show you how to do the manual update first. Go to manual update with the A button and then you can select the individual console and system that you want to scan. In this case, since we're only doing Genesis, I'll scroll down to Genesis, select it with A, and it will only scan for ROMs inside the Genesis folder. If you have thousands upon thousands of ROMs copied over at some point, and you run the global scan that automatically scans for everything, it can take quite a while. Once it's done scanning, you'll be back at the menu. Press the B button to go back to the root level of the main menu here, and then press B again to go back to the interface for EmuStation. 
Whether you want to put image files on your Xbox hard drive or not, you absolutely want to have access to the downloader because there is so much great content, including free homebrew games that you can get from there. Go to options on the main ribbon menu and select it with the A button. Use the D-pad to scroll down to one option below from the bottom called Downloader and then select it with the A button. You get a pop-up message asking you to confirm whether or not you want to download the Downloader onto your Xbox. You absolutely do. Use the D-pad to scroll over to Yes and then select it with the A button. Once it's finished downloading, select OK with the A button to continue. This first time and every subsequent time that you go to Downloader, Instead of getting that option to download it, you'll get the actual downloader itself. This is the main interface for it. If you look in the left navigation, there's a ton of great stuff that you can get to. For the scope of this tutorial, I just want to focus on images. Make sure the cursor in the left navigation bar is set to images, and then use the D-pad to scroll to the right. That'll put you over in the images downloader section. We're interested in images for the Sega Genesis, so scroll down to the console that you want, Select it with the A button. When the option appears here, select Download to begin the download process. After a brief check for any updates to the image files, you'll get a notification about the size of what you're attempting to download. If you're ready, slide over to Yes with the D-pad, select it with the A button. The downloads typically take several minutes, so hang in there while it does its thing. Once the download process and install processes are complete, you can select OK with the A button to continue, which takes you back to the downloader. Press B to go back, and then B to go back again to the MU Station main menu. Before you launch the games for the first time, if you just go ahead and straight up launch, you're only going to see text labels for the games in a big column in the center of the screen. Press Start on the Xbox controller so you and I can fix this. Go down to UI Settings and select it with the A button. The first option in the list is called View Mode. It's set to basic, which means it's only going to have text in a centered column in the middle of the screen. To see a picture of the box cover art in the synopsis information you downloaded, change this to detailed. The option I like the best is called thumb, because it has the largest size of box art cover in the UI. Then press the B button to go back, and then the B button again to go back to the user interface for EmuStation. Now you can go launch your games. Check this out. You'll see the console name and the total number of game ROMs that you have properly identified and properly scanned. Select the console you want with the A button to continue. And then you're in the console with all of the ROMs that you've installed listed on the left side and the images on the right. This thumb format for the user interface uses the really large box art, which is nice. And besides, all of that descriptive text would be really small for you to read, especially if you're looking at this on mobile, so you might as well look at the glorious box art instead. I'm going to load up one of my favorite Sega games of all time, OutRun. To launch your game, all you have to do is select it in the left navigation, and then launch it with the A button. And let me just say, for a 19-year-old game console, it actually plays these games very well. You can put together quite an emulation box on your original Xbox console. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on great original video game content as it's posted. And check out this video here, shown on screen and linked in the pinned comment and description below. Thanks so much for being here. I always appreciate our time together. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.